Welcome back to Combo Class. I'm your teacher, Demotro, and today I'm starting off by getting rid of some useless consonants like X, Q, C, consonants that really are all just stealing from K. C takes K or S, Q takes K or W, X takes K or S. So we can definitely take these three consonants out. But what consonant sounds do we really need? So today we are just gonna be analyzing consonants because vowels are a whole nother mess. In fact, not many people know, but there was something known as the Great Vowel Shift that occurred between 1400 and 1700, where a lot of vowels changed what they did. And now they're so confusing that even focusing on the consonants, we're gonna have enough of a mess. To catalog all the consonant sounds that we use, there is something called the International Phonetic Association and they make a chart that's pretty cool that shows their way of writing out all of the consonant sounds. I'll flash that chart here. But it's a little bit confusing because there's all sorts of sounds on there written in ways you don't know, and it includes some sounds that we don't really use much in English. For example, like a Jewish or a tongue click or something. But let me show you my version of the chart that includes all of the consonant sounds that we commonly use in English. On my chart, the columns represent the names for ways you can shape your mouth when you're making a consonant, and the rows represent the way you blow out the air. Let's see where some sounds we know lay here. When you make the H huh sound that we use an H for, and I'm just gonna be using the letters the ways you guys usually know to spell them, not that international phonetic way yet. So glottal mixed with fricative turns out to be the combo that the H huh sound is called. Down here, we got some called approximants, and I'm gonna get them out of the way because they're a little weirder. We got W, we got R, and we got Y, but let's think of them as W, R, and Y for now. Next, let's put on the ones known as nasal sounds, like M, mm, which is known as the bilabial nasal, or M, mm, the alveolar nasal, or even M. Mm. Now we hit the first one that we don't have a consonant that represents well. We use a combo of N and G to make this M mm one. The last one I'm gonna get out of the way real quickly is the ul sound, which we can pop down there and the rest of them are actually going to be sharing boxes. Let's see why. How about a bilabial plosive up in our top left corner? Plosives are fun ones that go something like that. So a bilabial plosive turns out to be P if we go P, but it also is B, B. That might sound weird because we don't associate these letters. But take your mouth right now and go p, and then go b, and see how similar your shape of your mouth was. Our next box sharing couple is going to be our labiodental fricatives, f and v, f, v. Once again, make those sounds. See how similar they are. F, v. Here in alveolar, we got the pair t, d. We also got the pair s, z. And our velar plosive would be k, g. Now we start moving into more ones that we don't have a good single consonant for. And I'm just gonna write the combo that we usually use like I did with m. Here we got sh, z. Z is a kind of rarer one, like in measure or treasure or a bunch of words like that. And it turns out those ones are our uh, paleo, uh, paleo alveolar fricatives, apparently. We got our sh and our zh. Also sounds that are just voiced and unvoiced with the same mouth shape. Right under sh we got ch And finally, we got two that I'm gonna write pretty similarly. The dental fricatives are th and th. So I'll just put one uncapitalized and one capitalized, but we do have to consider th and th as different ones if I'm going to include all the common consonant sounds. So the way we structure our 26 letters, 21 of them are consonants, three of them, C, X, and Q, are unnecessary because they do not add any phonetic sound here, they just copy others, and the other 18 try and cover this span in a really bad way. To cover these other ones that we don't have a normal letter for, we have a lot of different ways of trying to do that. 
Let's say I'm writing the word accident. Well, now doubling the C turned it into an X sound to cover that missing X combo, which doesn't need to be on here because it's a combo of two. But what if I write catch? Well, the first C is copying a K. This one makes the CH sound we want using an H as a buffer. And sometimes when I put an E on the end, that'll change it, or there's tons of different ways we alter our letters to try and get these other sounds. But the best would be if we just had 24 consonant symbols. We already have 21, three useless ones included. Why can't we just have 24 functional ones and cover it all? Well, let's say people don't want 24 symbols. Maybe we do want to do the thing where doubling letters or adding an H can change their sound, have less symbols, but more ways to combine them into missing sounds. Let's see the way we do it right now with the H. We make C go to CH, T does it also, S does it. But how are we changing these sounds when we do this? K goes to CH. Make those sounds with your mouth, K, CH. Now make K, G with your mouth, which are more similar. K, G, the voiced and unvoiced. So if C was going to change to anything, it should be KG. Or if it's going to be the CH, it should be CHJ. What about T? T, TH. T and TH are not in the same box either. S, SH, S, SH. S should be changing to Z if we are doubling letters or adding an H to change stuff. So my other pitch is, if we're not gonna have 24 symbols, let's have 16 symbols, and we'll just have the first one of these as our symbol, and then we'll double it or put a line under it or something to turn it into the other option. So we could have 16 symbols, eight of which double, or 24 symbols, and that would cover all of the consonant sounds we use in English. But no, we have 21 that barely do the job. So those are just a few of my pitches of ways we could maybe tidy up this crazy annoying English alphabet. A lot of people are hooked on the alphabet staying the same, but it's been evolving over the past thousand years, and I think we should let it evolve some more. <laughs> I'll see you folks next class.